Ahmad Shahira, the Israel and Palestine Director of Human Rights Watch, joins us now live from Amman. Welcome to the programme. Really great to have you with us today. Um, why do you think Israel has designated these Palestinian NGOs as terrorist organisations? That is a very big word. You know, why? What's their objective? This is clearly and transparently about muzzling uh, their work challenging Israel's apartheid against millions of Palestinians. We need to understand, you know, the outlawing of these groups and the efforts uh, in the past couple of days to raid their offices, seize their documents um, and equipments and issue closure orders in the context of what's now been a years long assault on human rights advocacy. We also saw earlier this month a member of the Israeli human rights group, B'Tselem, who was detained and interrogated about their work. Um, I was deported myself by the Israeli government from Israel and Palestine over our human rights reporting. Staff of Amnesty International have faced punitive travel bans, and many, of course, Palestinian human rights defenders mm -hmm. have borne the brunt with arrests, travel bans and other sorts of measures. So how can, uh, as you say, you were expelled uh, from Israel for your work uh, for Human Rights Watch. How can you do your work? How can other um, organisations like yours do their work and really be the voice there uh, for the people? Look, I mean, we're talking about a situation of systematic human rights abuse, crimes against humanity of apartheid and persecution being committed by the Israeli government, and that requires independent human rights reporting. That work continues despite the efforts to muzzle our work. Even though I'm no longer in Israel-Palestine, our team remains on the ground. We continue to monitor, you know, the Israeli government isn't the first to restrict our access. Governments like North Korea and Egypt and Venezuela have done the same, but our work continues. Uh, Palestinian human rights organizations who have faced much worse repression this hours after a closure order was affixed to their door and the raids took place, were back in their office, continuing their vital work. There really is no other choice. I mean, we're talking about a situation in which every single day, millions of Palestinians are deprived of their fundamental rights solely because of who they are. So the least that we can do is bear witness, document, expose these crimes and call for accountability. And I do wonder, because yesterday we marked 100 days since uh, the killing of uh, Shireen Abu Akla. You know, with, with the closure and uh, this uh, targeting of NGOs, could an investigation into, you know, her killing and the process that we're seeing now, would that have been hampered? No, I mean, look, uh, Shireen Abu Akhla's killing follows some of these same patterns. The reality here is the Israeli government has long whitewashed their serious abuses. They have failed to hold uh, perpetrators to account, and that's why it's incumbent on the International Criminal Court to do so. Groups like the Palestinian NGOs have been at the forefront of documenting these sorts of serious abuses. They have produced evidence along with many, many independent other folks that have all pointed to the Israeli government having gunned down Shireen Abu Akhla, and it's critical uh, um, that cases like these are investigated, that the perpetrators are held to account, because when you don't have real accountability in place, you end up having these patterns repeat themselves. And let me just say that, like, when we're in a situation where human rights groups are being outlawed and blocked from doing their work, how can we ever expect the government to, to respect fundamental human rights if those documenting and exposing those crimes can't even be free to conduct their work? Omar Shahir, uh, good luck with your work. Omar Shahir from uh, Human Rights Watch. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you.